All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned his truth from. Honor to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word to the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquas that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, The Lord is Not Showing Up with a Smile on His Face. Now, I want to get into this lesson because we were uh, going over this at camp this past Sunday. And uh, this is stuck with my spirit all the way until, you know, last night going through today. Because the thing is, uh, a lot of people are seeking the Lord, quote unquote, <laughs> a lot these days because they're seeing this precious society crumble. You know, all these rumors of wars keep popping up. Um, you know, the pandemic is getting worse and worse you know this new variant is uh spreading a lot quicker than the other ones and uh you know the second lockdown seems like it's getting ready to happen soon and everything like that people are are not in a, in a christmas spirit and everything like that because of what's going on in life and at the end of the day you know a lot of people are seeking the lord they seeking him so they can he can make things better but what they don't understand is the Lord is not going to come down here to bring you peace. Okay. The Lord is not going to come down here to help everybody out. The only people he's going to help out is the elect and he's going to save them. Okay. That's going to be the ultimate form of help. He's going to save them. But for everybody else who, who is not acknowledging the Lord of the Bible, the God of the Bible, if you're not acknowledging that power, you are going to be into the damnation, man. You're going to be damned. You're going to be doomed. And it's pretty much a wrap for you. That's why the scriptures say, uh, woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Because you don't know what the day of the Lord is. You know, a lot of people over here still pr uh, praying to Jesus and everything like that. And they still over here talking about Christmas is Jesus' birthday. When we're in an age of information. Okay, we're in the age where the truth is out here, man. The truth is out here. And the thing is, a lot of people outside of the Israelites even bring out the truth about Christmas and the truth about what he actually looks like. You know, a lot of you, you people are just hypocrites, man. You just like to do things in the world and everything like that because it makes you feel good. But you don't want to do the thing, do the things that's hard, which is walking through the straight gate, which is acknowledging what the scriptures are really talking about. And this is why the Most High, or I should say, or I should uh, say, yeah, I was shy. He's gonna come down here with great wrath, man, through the power of the Most High. Okay, he's gonna come down here with great wrath because he is angry, man. He's getting tired of the blasphemy. You know, he he uh he shed his blood for our sins and for his own. You know, he went through that death so we can understand these scriptures. You know, it's so much more, man. It's 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 it's, it's just a lot that he went through. Just so, you know, the kingdom could be uh, established and we can get back to the most high. And you people out here still are not acknowledging who he is, man. Even though we out here telling you week in and week out what the truth is. So the Lord is going to come back and he's going to make sure he destroys you because you people just do not listen. So we're going to start off with this. We're going to start off with Matthew 10 and 34. It says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Okay. He came not to send peace, but a sword. So when people always say, yeah, God is going to make everything better and everything like that. No, that's not the case. Now he has a balance where he'll make things better for you if you deserve it. Okay. Or he'll allow, you know, the spiritual uh, demon Satan, you know, to get you in certain places where you may feel like you're blessed because you may have a decent amount of money or you live in a good neighborhood or things are going well for you. Okay, you might have certain things going on good for you right now, but like the scriptures say, the Most High knows how to reserve the wicked for their punishment. He can have all of these things go good for you just so at the end he could punish you greatly, man. Like I was saying earlier, he's a balance. So at the end of the day, it says, Think now that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So the Lord is coming down here with a sword. And what do you do with a sword? That is a killing instrument. When the Lord cracks the skies and he finally showcases himself, he is going to kill a lot of people, man. 
he's going to kill a lot of people and he's doing that right now you know using uh esau using you different jakes out there to kill each other and everything like that to bring the judgment to bring the judgment upon a lot of you people because a lot of you people need need the judgment man that's the only way that you don't understand is through uh your blood shedding man so this is one of the clues that lets you know that the lord is coming back with great vengeance man okay let's go to psalms um let's go to psalms chapter 7 verse 10 and it says my defense is of the most high which saveth the upright in heart the most high judges the righteous and the most high is angry with the wicked every day you see that the most high is angry with the wicked every day if he turned not he will wet his sword he had bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared, prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. So we all know that this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. So when you read certain scriptures and, it's, and it says arrows, you know, it's speaking about the, uh, the missiles that he's going to shoot over here to destroy Babylon the Great, which is going to be his ultimate instruments of death. Because the majority of this world needs death. They're going to receive death. By the hands of who? The Most High. It said it right here. The Most High judges the righteous. And the Most High is angry with the wicked every day. He's angry with you people that love to sin. A lot of you people always use the excuse. Oh, we don't have to follow the law anymore. You know, uh, in the New Testament it says we don't have to do that. But it's all kind of accounts in the New Testament that shows you even from the Lord's mouth himself that he's all for the law. He said he came here to fulfill the prophets, to fulfill the law. Okay? And then when you go into the scriptures, what is sin? Sin is when you transgress the law. And what does sin equal? Sin equals death. This is why a lot of you people are dropping dead these days. And a lot more people are going to drop dead in the future. This is why we say you need to get right with the Most High. Because he's angry with the wicked every day. So you got to think to yourself, if he's angry with the wicked every day, how do you think he's going to appear when he finally showcases himself if you all do not change? If this world continues to go the way it is, what makes you think that he is going to come and, and, and showcase himself? You're going to see him in full-blown status and he's going to have a smile on his face. What makes you think that if he's, if he's angry with the wicked every day and this world doesn't have any type of sign of changing? You got to think like that, man. This world is not getting better. This world is getting worse and worse. Like the scriptures say, the deceiver and the deceiver, the deceiver and the ones that deceiving, you know, uh, roughly uh, paraphrasing, they're waxing worse and worse. Okay? This place is not trying to get better. You all not out here trying to do what the scriptures say. We over here tell you this is stop eating pork and you look at us like we funny. you like, no, I need my bacon or my cheeseburgers. No, man, I love pork chops. It's delicious. You know, you love your shrimp. You love your shrimp, Alfredo. Jake loves his catfish. <laughs> you know? The most high is angry when you eat abominable foods, man. And that's just one thing. We can go on and on and on and on and on about the things that you all do in this life. And you all still will not change. So he's continuing to be angry. At who? The wicked. Okay, the wicked, which is, of course, ultimately esau the edomites all right because they are the border of wickedness and then you two-thirds jakes because you all are wicked you all are wicked man okay we telling you you the ones that need to get right speaking to you negroes latinos and native americans we telling you that you need to get right but you refuse to so like i said when the so when you have a shot showcases himself full-blown he's going to be looking at you two-thirds and he's going to destroy you point blank period man if he's angry right now in the heavens, you best believe when he showcases himself, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna, um, he's gonna showcase that anger as well. You're not gonna get away from this, man. You're not gonna get away from it. Let's go to Luke 18 and 6. This is Luke chapter 18, verse 6, and it says, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? though he bear along with them i tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh shall he find faith on the earth all right so at the end of the day you know he's telling you that you know he's going to avenge his elect he's going to avenge the one that's sighing and crying okay when you read ezekiel 9 and 4 you can go to that the ones that's out here sighing and crying for the abominations that be done okay he's going to avenge them 
because we're the ones that well, that's sorry we're the ones that keep praying every single day for forgiveness and we we're acknowledging our sins we're telling the most high we're telling you how about showing you how we shot that we are sinners and we're trying to get right with him so then we can uh be saved and he's going to avenge his elect okay let's look up that word real quick let's look up the word avenge we're gonna look up avenge real quick all right and it says to take vengeance or exact satis uh, satis satisfaction for it says to take vengeance on behalf of okay now what is vengeance let's click on that it says infliction of injury harm humiliation or the like on a person by another who has been harmed by that person violent revenge <laughs> violent revenge an act or opportunity of afflicting such trouble the desire for revenge hurt injury curse imprecation okay so at the end of the day when the lord showcases himself he's going to have he's going to showcase that violent revenge okay he's going to avenge his elect because he's going to get these edomites and these other heathen nations who kept us down and keep putting us down and was ruling over ruling over us with wickedness okay so when he showcases himself he's going to avenge meaning he's going to come back and he's going to what what we just read for the definition of vengeance He's going to come down here. He's going to harm people, injure people, kill people, shackle people up, put them in captivity. It said, uh, let's go back to it. Because what it say? Um, it said humiliation. Yeah, he's going to he's going to humiliate these Edomites, man, and these other heathen nations, man. You know, he's because he's going to switch the roles. He's going to come down here and really showcase how stupid they really were this whole time. He's going to humiliate them, man. And a lot of you Jays gonna feel humiliated as well because you're gonna and you're gonna feel ashamed because when you realize these things are going down, you're gonna be like, damn man, I should have listened to whoever it was that you came across and took this word seriously. Okay, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have to pay because the Yahweh Shah is not about to go on that cross again. He's not about to about to do that again, man. He did that once, and he that was a great uh thing that he did. That was a great sacrifice that he did for the whole nation of Israel. But since you don't want to acknowledge the greatness that he did, his great work, guess what? You're gonna have to die, man. You're gonna have to die. You shed your blood, and you come back in the kingdom on the second go-around. All right. That's what it's gonna be. So at the end of the day, this is another clue to show you that the Lord is gonna come down here and he's gonna be angry. He's gonna get rid of millions of people, man. Millions. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 15 and 7. It is 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 7. And it says, Therefore saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the soul of the just complain continually. And therefore said the Lord, I will surely avenge them, and will receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them okay so here it is again okay because you know the ones that's in the spirit world the ones that's uh that you know they're in the perfect mind right now they're the ones who died in the truth they knew what it was so now they're in the spirit world all right and they're crying to the most high they're like man when you gonna do something about all of this wickedness that's going on down here man you know when you finally gonna you know avenge us when you finally gonna put us on top or, or you know get our enemies we're gonna stop them from doing these things to us you know but just like the scriptures say our thoughts are not the most highest thoughts he does everything within time he knows that what's going on down here because he's orchestrating it but he does everything within time <coughs> so like you so at the end of the day he's going to do things according to when he needs to do it when he feels like it's perfect okay and when he feels like it's perfect he's going to give the order to you how shine the angels and they're going to blow the trumpet. They're going to make the moves. And then things are going to start to happen. Okay. But at the end of the day, he said he was going to avenge us. And the, and the Most High is a man of his word. He is not somebody that's going to turn back his ways. Just like when he made the oath to make us his chosen people. He said, no, this is, I made an oath. You all will be my chosen people. You all will get the kingdom. You all will live deliciously. So forth and so on. I'm going to give that, those, those things to you. But first, you all going to have to go through certain things first. All right. But at the end of the day, like I said, this is another clue to let you know 
the Mosai himself, you know, the Mosai, Yahweh Shai, they are about business, man. They are about to avenge. They're about to kill. That's why we read Deuteronomy. It says, I kill, I make alive, okay? They kill, man. And that's exactly what's getting ready to happen. And the thing is, you're getting ready to see it personally. Personally, man. This is not just going to be the most high putting the spirit upon people anymore, man. You're actually going to see the Lord come down here and do these things himself. That's why this, That's why you got to fear the Lord, man. That's just, that's just one of the reasons why you got to fear the Lord. You do not want the Lord to come back and look at you with that angry eye, man. You do not want that to happen. So we're going to end it off with, with this. Revelation 19 and 11. And it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. So when, when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's making war. Okay? When he comes back, he's making war. He's not coming down here to hold your hand, give you hugs, and smile. He's coming down here to judge and make war. He's going to judge every single one of you. He's going to be like, oh, no, you kept committing adultery. You kept blaspheming on my name. You kept being a homosexual, so forth and so on, man. He's going to judge and he's going to make war. Why is he going to make war? Because Esau's actually going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels. Okay, so Yahweh Shai is going to come down with his army. Okay, and they're going to knock Esau right out the park, man. And it says, verse 12, it says, his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, okay? So those many crowns represents all of these different kingdoms, all these different countries that he's going to take down, all right? He's going to take all of those crowns and he's going to put his on top. He is the king, okay? And it says, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the Most High. Because Yahweh Shai is the word, man. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth go the sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty power. Okay? So Yahweh Shai is going to have the fierceness and the wrath of the Most High within him, man. He's going to be in that angry spirit. He's going to rule, the, rule these nations with a rod of iron. What do you do with a rod of iron, man? You beat people with it, man. Slavery will be in the kingdom of heaven, man. He's going to knock these other nations out. And he's going to do that to you two-thirds as well. You two-thirds are not going to be slaves. Don't get, you know, don't get it twisted. You two-thirds are not going to be slaves. But, hey, he is going to make sure judgment uh, uh, is brought upon you. He's going to make sure that you feel what you deserve, man, because you refuse to acknowledge the, the, the Lord of the Scriptures. And then it says, verse uh, 16, it says, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. So when Yahweh Shai comes back, he is going to showcase himself as the ultimate king and the ultimate lord, man. He's going to showcase himself as the almighty, you know, the alpha and omega, because he is the beginning and the end, man. He was there in the beginning to help create the earth and, and, and space and us and everything else. And now he's getting ready to take back what's his. Because when you, when you read the scripture, the Most High said he's going to give everything to his son, which is Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So at the end of the day, this is what the Lord is all about when he, re, when he returns. This is why we say you need to get right, man. Okay? Because we coming into exciting times, definitely. We come into exciting times because we're about to see our Lord. We're about to see the angels. We're about to see the deliverance of the Israelites, the elect. Okay? But at the same time, we're also about to see the downfall of America. We're about to see the destruction of Babylon the Great. And Yahweh Shai is going to help destroy this place, man. So you need to get with it, man. Acknowledge the Lord of the Bible before it's too late, man. Because if not, like I said, he's going to look at you. He's angry with the wicked every day. And he's going to make sure he showcases and lets out his anger on you. So get with it, man. Get with it. So I hope this is edifying. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekai Kwadash. Double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned this truth from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the aqua that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzaza, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.